in lean product development, one of the key techniques that is a little bit more advanced, but allows you to knit together the concepts of um, a minimal backlog, as well as use the telemetry that you're, you're collecting in your application is this idea of hypothesis driven development or hypothesis driven engineering practices, right? And in um, those practices, you kind of, you have, you, ha you, you as a product owner or product manager are going to come up with um, uh, 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 an assumption, right? I assume that if I add this feature to the product, this will be what happens. Right, I, I, that's an assumption. I, I assume that adding this feature is going to add some value, and this is how I've quantified that that value. We can we can turn that assumption into a hypothesis by figuring out how we're going to measure it. Right. So the, I think that the easy way to think about a hypothesis is that it's an assumption with something you're going to measure to validate whether that assumption is indeed correct. So if you create all, all of your ideas, I'm saying all of your ideas, it's not all of them, right? You're going to have to make a decision as a, as a product manager on what things are worth experimenting on and other things that you just have to have. So for example, if I'm making a system where users have to log in and then interact with my system in some way, I have to have a login. I'm not going to create a hypothesis that I think I need a login. I do need a login. There's no option in that. That's table stakes, right? In order to be able to have that, that level of interactivity. So don't worry about those things. You, you need to make a decision on what sits in that category of stuff we just have to do um, versus stuff we think is going to provide value. And if we think it's going to provide value, um, then we probably want to have some kind of hypothesis. We want to list what metrics would we like to collect in order to validate that we've made progress towards the outcome that we're trying to achieve, right? That's our hypothesis. Um, and once we've, and this is where it links into telemetry, right? Because you can make sure that you um, add the telemetry specifically to collect data that will allow you to make those decisions, okay? And in hypothesis-driven practices, once, once you've got that hypothesis and you've understood what it is you're trying to achieve, you want to figure out what's the smallest experiment that you can run to validate that you can have the effect that you want. Right, the smallest experiment that you want. Run. This is where we start getting to the minimal backlog, right? We wanna maximize the amount of work not done. Right? We want to make sure that we don't do stuff we don't have to. So if we are going to build this big feature, uh, we come up with a hypothesis that building this big feature will provide this outcome, maybe more, more users in our system, more, more conversions into paid accounts. Um, and we're going to measure it by measuring the number of people that make that conversion. I'm being really simple here. Right? Then um, we could say, well, what's the smallest experiment we could run to move that needle to get more people converting? And we can try lots of little things to figure out what has the biggest impact on that needle moving. That's hypothesis-driven practices, right? We have a hypothesis. We allow that to drive our empirical engineering process, our empirical development process. We might not be building software products, right? But our empirical development pro process to continuously figure out how do we maximize the value that we have in the system. But it also allows us, at the end of the first experiment, to go, well, you know, we didn't get anywhere near the impact that we thought we were going to get from, from, from adding this, this capability. Uh, and we added the first part and our users didn't care. Is it worth us investing in this feature? Or do we not? Do we, do we stay the course, continue building it? Do we pivot on this feature? Do we change direction? Or do we just stop and we don't waste any more money on something that's not going to work? Those choices are the product manager's decision. And the data that you collect informs but does not control the outcome, the choice that you make, right? 
you still need to make the choice. You are still accountable for that choice. But hypothesis driven engineering practices allow you to have the, 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 the data and the thought process to try and maximize the value that you deliver and minimize the waste that you have in the system of spending time on stuff that your users don't really want or that they don't your 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 customers don't really want in your product. So you can use hypothesis driven practices to knit together empirical process as well as that idea of collecting telemetry, minimizing your product backlog, lean inventory, and bring these two things together to maximize the value that you create in the system.